Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. So the video that I have for you guys today is a very recent case and it's a solved case but there's still so much information that has to come out and so many unanswered questions. Now originally this was not a case that I wanted to cover for many different reasons, one being that it does involve a child and this case made me very very upset while researching it. But I did end up deciding to cover it because because first of all, a ton of you have been requesting it. Another reason is because it's one of those cases that is just really eye-opening and shows that it's important to realize that violence is not something that's unique to adults. It can happen with just about anybody and it shows how important it is to watch and listen for anything that may seem off or just not right. I also want to note that a lot of information about this case is coming out constantly. As I was researching over the course of about two weeks, more and more information just kept coming out. So if this video seems a little bit all over the place and out of order, that's because I'm pretty much just adding information into this video as I can find it. But I did do my best to sort of put everything into an order that makes sense, is easily digestible, and is easier to understand. So just bear with me. I also want to note that if more information comes out about this case as I am editing this video, I will add it to the video, or if it comes out after I post the video, I will add articles to the description box. But before we get into today's video, I wanted to go ahead and say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Honey. I've been using Honey for years now, long before I partnered with them for this video, so I was so excited when they offered to be a sponsor. Honey is basically an online shopping tool that automatically searches for promo codes on a bunch of different products so that you don't have to. Basically, it's this little button on the top corner of your browser that works on a bunch of different websites searching for promo codes on products that you're already trying to buy on things such as video games, shoes, or food delivery. My friend actually told me about Honey a long time ago when I was searching for some new running shoes and I'm so glad she did because it saved me so much money. Honey actually found me a 25% off coupon for Adidas so I got a huge discount on my new running shoes. Basically how it works is that when you have a product that you want to buy, Honey runs the searches for you and tells you how many coupons have been found and then applies each one to see which one will save you the most money. Then, once it finds the one that works, it will apply it to your purchase and tell you just how much money you've saved. It's such a good feeling when you're expecting to spend a certain amount of money on a product only to end up saving a lot of money completely effortlessly. When there is a coupon, Honey found a discount of 18% on average, which is pretty great. If you want to effortlessly save money, you can add Honey to your browser for free at joinhoney.com slash Rachel Shannon or click the link down in the description box. It's literally free, it's so easy, and it's gonna save you a bunch of money, so why not just try it? So again, make sure you click the link down below in the description box and head over to joinhoney.com slash Rachel Shannon to add Honey to your browser for free. Thank you again to Honey for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so with all of that being said, let's jump into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the murder of Tristan Bailey. Tristan Bailey was only 13 years old when her life was ripped away from her on May 9th, 2021. Tristan went to middle school at Patriot Oaks Academy in St. John's, Florida. She was the baby of the family, being the youngest of five children. She had three older sisters, Brittany Bailey Russell, Alexis Bailey, and Sophia Bailey, as well as an older brother named Tegan Bailey, and their parents are Stacy and Forrest Bailey. Altogether, they called themselves the Bailey Seven. Tristan was described as a hardworking, dedicated, and talented young girl. She was well-liked and had so many friends, and it was for a good reason. She was very kind-hearted and was always the one who saw the best in others and defended the underdog. She was just someone who expressed her love for others openly and wasn't afraid to tell her friends and family that she loved them every single day. Also, just like many other teenage girls her age, she loved Starbucks books but not like a normal love for Starbucks, like if she went anywhere, she needed to stop at Starbucks. If she was going to Target, she wanted to stop at Starbucks on the way, which I mean is understandable. A shopping trip definitely isn't complete without a little bit of Starbucks in hand. Tristan was a cheerleader at Patriot Oaks Academy, but ever since she was little, she wanted to become a competitive cheerleader. 
But initially, when she had asked her mom, who was a former cheer coach herself, she said no. But Tristan was so determined that she went on to practice and taught herself a bunch of different skills to get on a team. I actually used to be a competitive cheerleader myself, so I absolutely admire her determination to teach herself those skills because that takes a lot of dedication. She had been on a team called Infinity All-Stars and they had just recently traveled to Orlando, Florida for an ESPN competition where her team took first place in their division. That competition is like a competitive cheerleader's dream, so winning first place is a huge feat. One thing her siblings admired about her was her dedication and her independence. Her older sister, Alexis, talked about one time over the summer after the COVID pandemic had hit. She described a situation saying, quote, once Tristan was officially in the house, I sat her down and I said, listen, Tree, I'm not your mom. You're going to help maintain this house with me. Again, there's a lot of animals in here. So, so we need to set on work on learning how to do laundry, dishes, vacuum, mop, scoop litter boxes, and train my new Great Dane puppy, Snitch. Spoiler alert, Tristan never figured out how to vacuum. During that summer, I got to watch Tristan grow and I realized just how much she is capable for herself. Then Tristan's older brother, Tegan, talked about how inspired he was that Bailey was so dedicated to her sport. He said, quote, I'm not fluent in cheer terms, but I understand that a significant milestone is something called a back tuck. The amount of times I would hear her talking about this and the amount of practices she went to to master this. That girl worked hard for her goals. Reading that and talking about it now it just makes me so upset because getting a new tumbling skill, which is basically what he's referring to, it's basically like gymnastics, getting a new skill is a huge deal and it takes months, if not years, to hit those milestones. Knowing how much work it takes makes me just so, so sad for her because getting a new skill is one of the best feelings in the world and some horrible, selfish person took that away from her. Now, Saturday, May 8th, 2020, 21 started as a pretty normal day. Mother's Day was the next day and the family had plans to celebrate together and just have some time to spend together as a family. However, that evening on May 8th, Tristan decided that she wanted to go out and hang out with some of her friends. As far as I have seen, her parents have always been totally fine with her going and hanging out with friends as long as she was home at a decent time and stayed in contact with them. So, according to Tristan's parents, the last time that they saw her was at their home at around midnight. She was expected to be home that same night, so when her parents woke up that morning and realized that she still wasn't home, they were immediately panicked, and by 10 a.m. that day on May 9th, Tristan was reported missing to the police. Now, with a lot of cases, police drag their feet and make a lot of excuses as to why a child is missing. But thankfully, with this case, police wasted no time and they started their searches immediately and immediately took to social media to find out if anyone in the public had any information regarding Tristan's disappearance. Numerous volunteers joined police efforts to search all around the area for Tristan in the Durban neighborhood. First, members of the community gathered at Veterans Park and searched there. Then, by around 4 p.m. the same day that Tristan went missing, the crime scene unit arrived on scene and they started searching a nearby wooded area on Saddlestone Drive. The searches were extensive and it actually wasn't long before they found the body of a young girl in the wooded area by a resident of that neighborhood. And immediately, Immediately, police knew that the body belonged to 13-year-old Tristan Bailey. Now, during the same time that investigators were searching for Tristan, they were also looking at surveillance video that gave them a pretty good glimpse of what happened before she went missing. So, they found out that Bailey was last seen at around 1.15 a.m. at the Durban Crossing Amenity Center located on North Durban Parkway in St. John's. There was actually surveillance video that showed two people walking towards the end of a cul-de-sac. One of those people was Tristan dressed in black clothes. The other was a boy who was wearing a light-colored hoodie and light-colored shorts. The two continued walking until they were out of frame and could no longer be seen. Then at 1.45 a.m., they can be seen walking together east on Saddlestone Drive until once again, they can no longer be seen. However, around 90 minutes later at 3.27 a.m., only one of them returned walking alone and barefoot carrying a pair of shoes. At this point in the 
the case, it hasn't yet been released what exactly Tristan was doing at the community center. Obviously, there are a lot of different recreational activities there, like a swimming pool, a basketball court, and a tennis court. I also saw that on some days, it's open 24 hours, but according to Google Hours, it does show that it closes at around 9 p.m. on Saturdays. So I'm not exactly sure if that's accurate. It seemed to have some pretty weird hours, but if it was closed, that means that they could have just been hanging out outside, or if it was open, they could have been inside doing some of the activities that are offered there. I'm not exactly sure. Now, pretty quickly after seeing this surveillance video, police were able to come up with their main suspect. In this investigation, there really was only one person who police were looking at, and they really didn't look at any other avenues, and you'll see why in just a minute. But they ended up finding out that the last person that Tristan was seen with before her death was 14-year-old Aiden Fucci. Now, Aiden Fucci and Tristan were both students at the Patriot Oaks Middle School, and they lived in the same small, tight-knit community in St. John's. According to classmates, the two were friends, but nothing beyond that. The two weren't dating, and they didn't even seem all that close, like they weren't even best friends or anything like that. They just seemed like two normal school friends. So immediately, police took Aiden in for questioning, and throughout the interrogation, he changed his story several times, but according to police, he made several admissions alluding to his guilt. So he had told police that him and Tristan had been at a friend's house before the two left. Then he says, as the two were walking around, the two got into an argument where he ended up pushing her forcefully, which resulted in her falling on the ground and hitting her head very hard. So he basically admitted that he was the one that was responsible for Tristan's death, but he kind of made it out to seem like it was more of an accident, like he didn't really mean it, that they were just arguing and something just ended up happening accidentally. Also, during the interview, police found out that after her death, he went home and told his mom that he was walking without shoes because his feet hurt. It's also known that the location where Tristan's body was found is less than a quarter mile away from Aiden's house. Also, before Tristan's body was found, but after she had gone missing, Aiden had posted a picture to Snapchat, which was a picture of him holding up a peace sign with the caption, hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? He needs to be locked up. So, because of all of this, Aiden was arrested and charged with second degree murder. The Snapchat that he posted after killing Tristan was a big indicator that he didn't feel bad about what he did. He was proud of himself. He made his intentions known and he wanted everybody to know that he did exactly what he intended to do. It also came out that apparently Tristan wasn't even his intended victim necessarily. Classmates came out and said that before Tristan's death, Aiden had been talking about how he just wanted to take someone to the woods and kill them. He wanted to do this for a long time and apparently Tristan just seemed to be a random victim. But this completely contradicts what he said earlier about the two just getting into a fight and him pushing her and her accidentally falling. So at this point in all of this, police hadn't yet released Tristan's cause of death. All they said initially was that Tristan was in very bad condition and it was pretty clear that she had been killed. However, after the autopsy was complete, Police came out and said that Tristan had been stabbed 114 times before her death, with at least 49 of them being to her hands, her arms, and her head, which were shown to be defensive wounds, which showed that Tristan fought with everything that she had during the attack. It was also found that the tip of the knife, believed to have been used in the attack, was found in her scalp. They also found Aiden's DNA all over her body. So, after all of this, police went ahead and conducted searches of a nearby pond, and they did end up finding a hunting knife that was missing a tip, so that is assumed to have been the knife that was used in the attack. All of this information just made this entire thing that much more painful and horrific, so police upped his charges to a first-degree murder and went ahead with charging him as an adult. They said that premeditation could definitely be inferred just by the sheer number of stab wounds. And again, it came out that he told someone beforehand that he wanted to kill someone in the woods before all of this happened. So it's pretty evident that this entire murder was planned. 
RJ Lorizza, the state attorney for the Seventh Judicial Circuit, stated, quote, It brings me no pleasure to be charging a 14 year old as an adult with first degree murder. But I can tell you also that the executive team and I reviewed all the facts, all the circumstances, the applicable law, and it was not a difficult decision to make that he should be charged as an adult. They still haven't made statements about his apparent motive, but they have said that when they looked at the surveillance video of the two walking together, there were no signs of trouble between the two of them at that point. Now, obviously, there are a lot of questions about Aiden and what his mental state was like and what his family life was like. I am really curious to find out more, but not a lot has been released about this. However, the more information that comes out about this case, the more disturbed I am about his parents, specifically his mother. So in a police interview, she originally stated to police that she didn't think that Aiden did anything wrong and she didn't have any indication to think that he was the one who committed this murder. And I'm talking more so about before he was arrested and before her body was found. So he came home that night and she said that he showed no indication that he had just gotten into trouble, if that makes sense. However, it came out that Aiden's mom, 35-year-old Crystal Smith, knew more than what she wanted to admit. So first, surveillance video in the home taken at 1.05 a.m. the day after Tristan was murdered showed Crystal and Aiden having a conversation. Then they see Crystal getting a pair of Aiden's jeans from the master bedroom. Then both Aiden and Crystal inspected the jeans several times before returning them to Aiden's bedroom around an hour and a half later at 1.28 a.m. Then the day after Tristan was murdered, so I think the same day that the surveillance video was recorded, Aiden was at the Johns County Sheriff's Office for a recorded interview. I am assuming that this happened when Crystal and Aiden were alone, but while they were in the room, Crystal asked Aiden if he was sure that nothing was on his clothes from the day before, and Aiden replied, I think so, why? Then Crystal can be seen giving Aiden a questioning look, and she whispered, blood. So then after Aiden was officially arrested and taken away from the home on May 9th, video surveillance from the family home showed that Crystal went into Aiden's bedroom, found what appeared to be a pair of jeans in his hamper, then went to the bathroom and scrubbed them in a sink. So then after seeing this video, police had a warrant to go into Aiden's bedroom and they found the jeans. The jeans were tested for blood and they tested positive. They also went and drained the bathroom sink and tested that as well and that too was positive for blood. So obviously this all points to Crystal scrubbing Aiden's jeans to get rid of the evidence that was on them. So because of this, just a few weeks ago in early June, she was charged with a third degree felony charge of tampering with physical evidence and is being held on a $350,000 bond. Around the same time that all of this was happening, Aiden went in front of a judge and pled not guilty to his charges. He is currently being held without bond in an adult prison. Hello, so this is editing Rachel right now and as I was looking more into this case as I was editing the video I did find out a little bit more about Aiden's father So I'm just gonna go ahead and read straight off of this article. I found there's a lot of stuff that looks pretty concerning um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and read it off basically word for word. So Aiden's father's name is Jason Michael Fucci. He was born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, and he has a pretty concerning history of abuse and sexual assault. So on January 1st, 2003, he was accused of child abuse, injury, and neglect. On November 17th, 2004, he was found guilty and was sentenced to one year and two months in prison. On October 1st, 2003, he was arrested for engaging in sexual activity with a 15-year-old girl at his home. He was found guilty and was sentenced to two years probation. With 158 days given as credit, he violated his condition and was jailed for 14 months. Then on December 7th, 2004, he was booked into the Florida Department of Corrections in Tallahassee, Leon County, Florida. He was released on June 28th, 2005. Then him and Crystal Smith went on to have their son, Aiden Fucci, who was born in 2007. Then in 2016, he was booked for battery. He was accused of getting into a fight at a gas station with a couple while Aiden was present. And by the time Aiden was arrested and charged with Tristan's murder, he was 36 years old. So as of right now, that's pretty much all I've been able to find out about Jason. It does obviously look very concerning. It's very frustrating that he didn't go to jail for longer for all of these sexual assault charges. It's kind of ridiculous, but 
I'm not sure if he was in the home with Aiden, how much of an influence he had on him. Clearly, neither of his parents are very good influences on him, and they were very young when they had him. Not that that means anything about, you know, their parenting, but I do think that that shows that they were pretty immature when they had him, so... That's just a little bit more information that I was able to find and I'm pretty glad that I found it because it does pretty much confirm that he just didn't have very good parents at home for him. So that is pretty much all of the information that I know right now for Tristan's case, but obviously there are still so many questions about what caused him to hurt her. But I do know that there's a lot of information that police just haven't come out with yet, so I will definitely be keeping you guys up to date with this case, and I will probably make another video after the trial and after a lot more information comes out. But even though we don't know a ton about Aiden or why this entire thing happened, I still wanted to cover this case because, first of all, I feel such a connection with Tristan because she was a competitive cheerleader just like I was. I see so much of myself in her and obviously she did not deserve what happened to her. It makes me so, so very sad knowing all of the things that I got to do in my competitive cheerleading career until I was 18 and just knowing that she doesn't get to do those things. Things. She doesn't get to experience the same feelings that I did after winning different competitions or getting a new skill. She only got to do that for such a short period of time, but she had so much potential. She could have gone on to do so much more in her sport and it's just so sad knowing that she can't go on to do it. And I know I'm just rambling at this point, but that's one of the reasons that I wanted to cover this case. But I also wanted to cover this case because I want to talk about the fact that a few of his classmates came forward and specifically said that Aiden had planned to kill someone in the woods. That is just so very disturbing and knowing that he told people ahead of time and nobody did anything is just so very upsetting and it's all too common. I feel like in so many cases that involve a young person taking the life of somebody else, that person spoke about it beforehand, whether it was to their friends or to a teacher or a teacher overheard them or anything. But but for some reason, it's never taken seriously. So if you get nothing else from this case, I just urge you to listen to those around you and take action when you need to. It's always better to be wrong than to be sorry. And honestly, that goes for pretty much any situation. If you're an adult and you hear a child or a teenager talking about something very disturbing, no matter how young or how old they are, you should do something, tell someone, whether it be their school or their parents or another trusted adult. Or if you see a child who is giving off signs that maybe things aren't very great at home, do something, tell someone about it, talk to the teenager or the child about it. If you see that a child or a teenager has a mental problem or an emotional problem, do something. All too often, we see people exhibiting concerning behaviors or just in a situation that looks a little bit concerning and we just ignore it and pass it off as nothing. I know that I'm very guilty of this. I've had situations where I see someone that maybe looks like they might be in trouble or, you know, there was one time that I saw a child that was kind of wandering alone and this was when I was a camp counselor and I knew that this child should not be wandering but I was really shy at the time and I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to be embarrassed if the parent was, you know, 20 feet behind, but it turns out that this kid had actually gotten away from their house and was just wandering around, so it was a really good thing in the end that somebody else noticed and said something because I didn't, and that's something that I regret because what if no one noticed? What if this kid walked out onto the street? That's just one example to me of a time that I saw something and didn't do anything, and I still regret it to this day. Even though nothing bad came out of that situation, even though the kid was fine, I still should have said something no matter what. So I feel like if we all just did our part to watch each other and listen to one another, things like this may be prevented. Obviously not everything, but some things might be. Even if one person is saved from being harmed or killed because someone else was just listening and said something or did something, it's totally worth it. 
So all I'm saying is that if you see something, say something. Even if you feel embarrassed, even if you're afraid that you're going to be wrong, even if you tell a friend and they say that it's not a big deal, if you have a gut feeling that something is off, you're probably right. Even if you do notice a kid with all of these different signs and they never go on to hurt anybody, it's still not healthy for a kid or a teenager to be thinking about hurting others or thinking about hurting themselves. Chances are, if they are a disturbed individual, they need help. Again, even if they don't hurt anybody, even if they have no intentions of hurting anybody, that shouldn't matter. Even if it's a kid that's dealing with their own personal struggles, that doesn't mean that they deserve to be going through that. So again, I know I'm just rambling at this point, but please keep all of this in mind if you ever feel uncomfortable or believe that you're seeing signs of an unstable kid or teenager. So that is all I have for today's video. You guys know that I'm so very sad about this case. I'm so very frustrated that this was able to happen in the first place. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about what happened behind the scenes, what happened with Aiden that made him want to do this. I'm just really looking forward to hearing about all of that so we can get some answers to these really, really disturbing unanswered questions. As always, make sure to go ahead and follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with any of the cases that I cover. I've been covering a lot of very recent cases that I'm sure are going to have updates in the near future. So if you want to keep up with those cases, make sure to go ahead and follow me on Twitter. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell to be notified of any future video that I post. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. Pretty much every single case that I cover here on this channel comes directly from that email or my Patreon. So again, make sure to send those suggestions over. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!